there, it's Ben here. And here in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how we add typewriter text in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, all you'll need for this tutorial are the built-in plugins in Final Cut Pro 10. Um, but if you do wanna kind of follow along and add your own typewriter sound, uh, then you can go to Soundstripe. They have some pretty awesome typewriter sounds there, as well as the, the sounds that you get when you're kind of winding the typewriter on and that kind of stuff. But let's dive into Final Cut Pro 10 and have a look at how to add typewriter text. Now, we're gonna have a look at how to add this, but then also perhaps more importantly, how to time it with our audio so that we get that effect of the type typing on in sync with the audio. So the first thing we'll look at is just the kind of basic adding of the type. Now, before we even get started, we're just gonna to go to Window, Workspaces, and set the default workspace. So we're all looking at the same thing in Final Cut Pro 10. And I've set up a square video here in Final Cut Pro 10. I'm gonna post this to Instagram and to Facebook once we're all done here with setting this up. So we're gonna to come to our Type and Generators tool at the top left here, click in here, and we're gonna open this up and come to the build in and out group here. And then if you kind of scroll through, we'll find the, the typewriter option here. So essentially we can drag this down to the timeline. We can just scroll through. Our type is white on this light background. So I'm just gonna change the color of that to a darker color so we can see it. And this works similar to most titles. So we can come in here at the top right in the inspector. If you don't see the inspector, just go to window show in workspace and make sure you have the inspector checked and then we can type in our text and straight from the get-go that text will type on so when we play this through it's going to type on now what you'll find is that it does tend to type on quite quickly so i'm going to stretch this out a little bit and we're going to come to the type options you can see we can slow this down by making it last for longer, or we can speed it up by making it last for less, less time. So we can have that text come on a little bit slower or a little bit faster. Now, depending on how much type you're actually putting into that text box, um, you can't actually slow it down sometimes as much as you'd want to. And that's what, really what we're gonna come to here. So I'm gonna delete this from the timeline. We'll actually delete these second set of clips. And I've got a bit more of a kind of complex set up here where you can see the text is really moving through quite quickly. So basically it doesn't even really look like it's typing on. So a couple of steps we're gonna go through here. The first is to add some sound effects. So we're gonna come up to the sound effects options here and then in sound effects. And you may find the typewriter effects in here. I had these already installed. I'm not sure if they come with Final Cut Pro 10 or with another audio program. So if you don't have any typewriter audio yourself, then Soundstripe's definitely a good option to, to kind of go for to find some sound effects there. So we'll drag this down to our timeline and we're gonna zoom right in here. So I'm using Command and Plus to zoom in. And essentially, I wanna be able to see a bit more of my audio waveform here. So we'll hold down Shift and Command and do plus, and we're gonna get a kind of nice big timeline there. Now you can see, when we play this through, basically for every single click of the typewriter, we're typing in a line's worth of type, which we don't want. So what we're gonna do is zoom in a bit more to our timeline here, so command and plus, and then I'm gonna click on my typewriter clip and go to file, new, and compound clip. And it's basically gonna wrap this into a group. And what that means is once our text is in a compound clip is that we can retime different parts of it. So essentially you can see my first click is here. So this is when my first letter appears. So I'm gonna pull back my text here and I'm just gonna use the cursor keys to move back. So basically I want the S that comes on here to line up with that first little click here. So actually I can do this with markers if I want to. So for the first one I will, if I hit M there and then highlight my timeline down here, my audio and press M again, I can match those up. Now I don't wanna do this for all these type elements, but for some it's gonna be useful. So then basically what I wanna do is come to find where the next letter comes on or just before the next letter comes on. So you can see it's right at the next kind of click. So what I'm gonna do now, as soon as I've got that letter on there, is I'm gonna do Shift and H, and that's gonna hold my S there. So now you can see, basically, the S starts, and then we have our next 
tap of the typewriter here. So I'm going to slide this back. Okay. So now, okay, so essentially we're going to have a whole bunch of holds here as we go through. So I'm just using J, K, and L to kind of go forwards and backwards. So I types on right at that point in time. And then I'm going to do Shift and H again. And that is going to hold my I until I get to the next letter. And essentially, we can go through and kind of retime all of these so that we get those letters coming on in exactly the right points in time. So here we're going to have that G come on. And actually, we'll zoom in a bit here. We're going to pull this back a little bit. What you'll find is sometimes you want the letter to appear before or just after the sound is made, and you'll kind of get a feeling for when that's the right moment. Okay, so we're just going to work through all of these. So now we've got our G on, and we're going to do Shift and H, and then we'll drag this one back. So I'm just shortening these red areas, and we'll find when the N pops on. So I'm going to pull this back now. Okay. So the N pops on there, and then we've got this little, I don't know why I've got a hyphen in there. Let's double click in here. We can come in and we can change this. And then we can go back using the back button here, and we'll just check everything is in sync. Okay, so you can see those first few letters are nicely in sync now. I'm going to go to Command and R, and that will bring back up my retiming window here. And we'll play this through. So we've got the N pop on there, and then the U. So we want to hold this here and pull this back. And you can see the only investment here really is timing, getting this right. So you want to make sure you've got the right sound effect before you actually start to retime these. So essentially, okay, we are holding after every letter has been made. Oh, and for some reason, oh no, that's good. So sign up, and then the P wants to come back to here. So again, find that P, Shift and H, hold it, and then so on and so forth. So I'm going to go through all of this, and then we will come back and have a look um, at kind of what it looks like when it's all done. But basically, this is a technique for adding typewriter text, and then also for timing it to those individual clicks of the typewriter, so you get that kind of nice slick effect. And we'll have a look, once I've gone through all the different letters, um, at how this works. So we've got the first line finished here, we'll just play this through. Okay, so you can see now that we've got that line finished, it's flowing really nicely, the timing is perfect with uh, the clicks of the typewriter. And because it's a typewriter, we have an irregular kind of beat and rhythm there. So we do need to go through this manually to get that kind of real natural feeling effect. So I'm going to go through the rest of this, get it all set up, and then we'll have another little look. And then right at the end, we're going to add a little cherry on the top to kind of uh, make this work beautifully. So now you can see we finished the timing of this, so we'll just play this through. And you can see it starts to work really nicely uh, with the flow of the typing and the sounds and everything like that. We've got a little bit of a, a gap here that I've put in here and I'm going to add in um, one little thing on this sound effect that we've got here. So I'm going to come up to my generators and we're going to use one of the BretFX hang tags, which are these little kind of drop down animations. And I think it's going to look quite nice um, just at this spot with a water polo ball um, as the image. So I'm going to select this and we'll drag it down above our clip here. So you can see, we 
just going to get the position this just right. So I want to get the drop when that sound effect happens. So we'll just make sure that's matching. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to zoom out and we'll just stretch this out to the end here. So we've got our animation and I'm going to replace a couple of the elements of this and just kind of reposition it and stuff. So we'll come up to the inspector here in the type generator options. I am going to scale this down. So I'm going to change the overall scale. So actually we'll move forward in the timeline so we can see the overall scale of it. Let's scale it down. And then we are going to move it into this little gap of a spot here and just get the scaling and the X and Y position just right. So now, just move it a little bit to the left here. Okay, so now that is dropping down nicely, but I'm going to change the words here. We will have water polo in here. And I'm going to scroll down. The text B is this little icon above there. Uh, I'll have a think about what I'm going to pop in there. We might actually not use it. So let's just take that out. So once we've added our text there, we're going to scroll down here and we're going to change the background of this, the yellow background from a texture to a drop zone. And so in here, we're going to add an image. We're going to use this image up in our inspector here. So basically this water polo ball and we'll just position this, this kind of a photograph of a water polo ball in the lake near me and we'll increase the scale of that a little bit and get a bit of the ball in there and a bit of the background lake. So you can see now we'll apply that and basically we play this through. When that cha-ching happens, we are going to get that little water polo ball pop down. I'm going to scroll up here. Um, we've got the kind of text A and Y position. I'm just going to increase the position of that a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. And we can also then just take a little bit of that tint color off in the background so we get a bit more of the, the water polo ball color. So let's play that through. So that is how to add the typewriter effect so your text types on. Also how to time it with the audio from the typewriter which really kind of makes it um, a lot, lot better. And then we're kind of throwing in this uh, little animation in there just to kind of fill up a little bit of space and make things a bit more interesting. One thing I would say, I'm not 100% happy with the type here. I think I would jump in here and just modify the text a little bit. Now you want to be careful when you modify your text in here. You don't want to change the size of it too much because it's already timed. You don't want to change the length of the text too much. But actually what I'm going to do is just make these elements here bold. And hopefully nothing gets bumped to out of place. Should be okay. And then I'm also going to scroll down with each of these individually highlighted and we're going to open up the face and I'm going to select, a, let's go for a red, I think, for those particular parts of the type. So it's going to look like this. Obviously, we can't see the background there, but we can see the element of the text that we're changing here. So I just do Shift and Z so we can see all the text. So we'll come down, select the color again, change that to red. Oh, sometimes you don't catch it. There we go. And the type on will still 
work with this. And it's just going to, I think, make this a little bit better here. Oh, another tricky one. Okay, so we'll close that up. We'll come back, press the back button here, and you can see, you know, I've done all the animation, so, and the timing, so that should still all remain intact. And one other thing I think we'll change in here in the typewriter is the youth water polo line. So let's just highlight this. I am going to come down. We'll make this a different color. Let's go for an orange for this bit. We'll make it bold. And I think I'm going to give it a little outline as well. So we'll give it a little bit of a outline here and I'm going to make that a white outline. Let's try two here. Okay, so one last play through. Okay, so there we have it. We have a nice little animation there. We can stretch this out a little bit longer. It's always nice to have a bit of a hold at the end. And I think I might just nudge the position of that to the right, just a fraction more, and we are good to go. So when I'm editing things like this, I will normally um, just edit a range. I won't kind of delete all this stuff at the end. So I'm just going to press O to mark an out point here. And now when I hit export, it's going to export out this, this range. So we'll share this to a master file, check the settings, all is good. So there we go. Um, so I hope that was useful um, in terms of adding the typewriter effect, getting things timed up with the sound. If you have any questions, then leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.